Today we're going to look a little bit more at noise removal and removing artifacts in um, Adobe Premiere and using Adobe Audition. So I'm going to make a new sequence here. There's my audio. I have my audio and my video here. Um, before I do anything, I want to edit the audio if I know that it needs to be edited. And this one, I can just tell you, it needs to be edited. There's a fan above my head, I'm not in a soundproof room. There's things that I need to take care of. So I'm going to do that first. Now let me show you why that's important real quickly by showing you another project I've been working on. Now this project I started before I really knew much about Premiere or Adobe or anything. And as an interview that started is just one clip. It's a almost one hour long clip of this in interview with the audio and the video connected. Well, I went through and I edited the entire clip and cut it into tons of different pieces like you can see here. And this is the, the shorter version. Here's, I mean, the 18 minute version has just probably over 100 clips. Now, if I would have edited this at the beginning, I mean, I did some slight editing, but if I would have edited it to the point that I was happy with it at the beginning, then all of the clips would have had the same edit. But now if I want to go through and do a better noise removal, I have to pick each clip individually. Edit in Adobe Audition, and it's just going to edit that one clip. Then I can come here, edit a clip in Adobe Audition, and I'll edit that one clip. It really is a pain because each one of these is a separate clip. But let me show you then um, what we're going to do with this one to get a little bit better noise removal. I'm going to edit clip in Adobe Audition. Now, Again, I've talked about this before, but I can tell that the sound levels on this are very low. And I'm going to want to amplify them. And if I'm going to amplify, it makes more sense to do it before rather than after the noise removal because then I will have a better idea. You know, the noise is quieter as well before I amplify. So if I get rid of the noise, but at a low level, maybe there's still noise there, but I'm not noticing it. And then I amplify and the noise is back. So there will be some instances. So I'm gonna watch the I'm gonna watch the bar here. I don't want it getting up to the red for sure. Have the audio and the video shot separately. Uh, that was the case with this interview I did with this gentleman. Uh, we used a digital SLR, a Canon Mark II, to shoot the I'm gonna put it about right there. I mean you want it getting to the negative threes, negative twos kind of, but you definitely don't want it maxing out. So I'm gonna apply that. And we'll see the video transform here, much brighter colors. Now, let's zoom in and start getting rid of the noise. I talked about this in the previous Adobe tutorial, but one of the best things to do is to just grab chunks instead of trying to do the whole thing at once, instead of doing it like this and saying, okay, this whole area should be quiet. So I'm just going to do it all at the same time. We're going to get a noise print just for this area at the top. And the areas that we know, I mean, there aren't really any vocals up there. It's pretty safe to go all the way to 100% and reduce by quite a few decibels. You can tell I'm not really getting, I'm not really getting any of my voice there, even when I do output noise only. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Now what I'm going to teach you today that's different from what I'd said before is um, what I'm going to call a multi-pass system. Because even now that I've removed that, uh, that one removes pretty good actually. Sometimes when you marquee it, it will make it easier to see that there's actually something still there. Another way to tell if there's something still there is to capture another noise print. Shift P and then do Control A, Control P. Because this is still here, there is something still there. Otherwise, it would just be blank. So we can go ahead and run it again. Now, the other thing I'm going to tell you is when we have an area that's totally silent, 
it's safe to just go ahead and, and do the whole thing piece by piece, go through and, and get rid of the noise. But another thing to do is if you hear a specific noise at a certain frequency, and you can pick it out and say, that's a noise that's really sticking out to me, something really useful to do is to use the marquee because now with this on loop repeat, it's only going to play what is in this frequency and this length of clip. And I can tell if I don't hear it here, let me try moving up a little bit. You know, that's kind of the frequency that's really bugging me right there. And I can tell where's the bottom of the floor of the frequency. Eh, kind of about right there. Now that's a good way to do things as well. If even after removing the noise of a silent area, you're still getting a noise, you know, that you can you can hear it there and you don't like that it's there. Now we can see that there might be a couple lines there. We could do another noise removal there. I'll do it in a minute. Now as we're getting towards lower frequencies, kind of in this mid-range here, that's more where you're going to hear the vocals. We can kind of see them here and down here. You have a high end of the vocals and a low end and kind of some mid-ranges. So we need to be a little bit more careful as we're doing these to make sure we're not taking out a large chunk of Three, the two. vocals. I can tell that I'm taking out a little bit, but nothing that really worries me. So I'm going to go ahead and do 100% still and reduce by 30 decibels. Now this one I can definitely see that there's some residual things left there. I can't really hear them, but I can go ahead and just select this whole area so far and do another noise print and get rid of some of these things that are still there. Now as they get closer to the range that I know that there are vocals, I will sometimes use a smaller section as I do my noise removal. I can hear a little bit more of the voice there, but not still not so much that it worries me that I'm going to mess anything up. Again, we can see that a little bit of residual noise was left there. We'll go, go through and get it in a minute. Another thing to keep in mind is the longer you can make the clip, the better. The more of a amount of noise or of yeah, of this what should be silence that you let the computer work with, the better. It's going to give you a better result. So, if you have a choice between making it from here to here or from here to here, you know, if this were still silence, you want to pick as much area as you can because that will give you a better result. Okay, so now if I look here, I can tell using the marquee, there's a little bit here. That wasn't just noise. That was I hit something or bumped something. 
So that wasn't your normal noise. It looks like everything else I can't really see. Now, the next suggestion I have is to just kind of listen through and see if there's any artifacts that you hear. And when they talk about artifacts, it's kind of uh, something that sounds very distorted. It's kind of, at least in my experience, it's usually kind of a high-pitched, almost a tinkling. Uh, it just it doesn't sound very good. So there will be some instances when we have the audio and the video shot separately. Uh, that was the case with this interview I did with this gentleman. Uh, we used a digital SLR, a Canon Mark II, to shoot the video. And I don't hear any artifacts. Now if you do, what you can do, let's say I heard some right here yeah. between this word and this word. If I heard some right here in this space, what I can do is use the marquee to select an area, play it back, and try and find yo, yo, where yo, where yo, is yo, that yo. that artifact. If it's not in this area, maybe I move it down a little bit, or I, I make another marquee. And if I can find the artifact, and I can adjust this, so it just contains the artifact, it doesn't include anything else, it just includes kind of that funny noise, I can capture a noise print of that, and set it to 100% and 30 decibels, and it will do a really good job getting rid of that, of that artifact, of that extra noise. So the last thing I'm going to do with this audio is just put a parametric equalizer on it because it sounds a little bit... And the Canon Mark II has... A little bit unbalanced. I feel like some of the highs and lows are a little bit off, but... That usually does a good job of helping. And that's it. That is a good way to get rid of artifacts. And again, the best way to the best place to check for them is kind of where you have some quiet spots. That you could almost call an artifact. I think it's just me moving though. Move this. Let's call an artifact though, just for the sake of this. I'm going to go through and do the noise print capture and removal process. And we'll see that that noise is not there anymore. There's another noise here, but the one that I selected is gone. Now I feel that this is a much better process than uh, what I had done before was just to lower this um, and, and lower this to a point that I felt like I wasn't getting any distortion. But honestly, I felt like in the end I actually got more distortion. I think a much better method is to leave those both high, leave this high, leave this high. Unless you're kind of in these mid-ranges and you notice with the output noise only option that you're getting a lot of the vocals. Then I might lower this a little bit or as I've shown in different videos, mess with these so that you don't lower the whole thing but maybe if it's the lower range of what you've selected, you can lower that. Or if it's the higher range that's catching the vocals, you can lower it here. Anyway, I feel like that's a much better way and then if you do get artifacts by doing that, just select the artifacts and do the same thing, get rid of them.